This is an official video of a package known as Easy API. In this video, I'll show you how you can simply integrate your Flutter application with REST API or GraphQL API in few lines of code. Now, I'll quickly show you a live example of how you can integrate your custom backend with your Flutter application. Now, let me show to you the Flutter application, which is right here, simply a boilerplate code and the following backend. Right, the following backend is one of the piece of code for our next YouTube project known as Task Planner. So I will be using the backend of Task Planner to simply fetch all the tasks in our boilerplate application for an example of Easy API. Now, first thing first, what you have to do, you have to simply move under a PowerPoint file and get the following package of Easy API. You have to simply write here version number, whatever it is. But as the package is currently under development, I will be simply using its git URL, which is this one. But what you have to do, you have to simply add the version number at this point. Now, once you have added the following version number, what you can really do, you can go back under a main.dart file and simply declare a base URL. What is the base URL? The base URL will be your URL of your API that you will be using throughout your project. At this point, you have to write the URL of your development project. That is some xyz.com slash some URLs, right? So once you have defined your base URL, what you can do under your project folder, you have to simply create three folders, model, repository and views. Now I'll show you some industry standard ways of how you can fetch API under your application. So first thing first, what you have to do, you have to simply go under task network and create a new boilerplate class. So here I will be creating a new class and I will be calling it task network. Now what the following network class will do, it will be under the base layer of the API paradigm. What will happen now? The following task network will be the base class for fetching raw data from our API. And once the raw data is fetched, we'll be using the task repository class to modelize the data from it. Now to put it under perspective, what I can really do, I can simply extend the following task network with a class known as easy API helper. Now the easy API helper will be giving us certain methods and properties through which we can simply use the rest API under our application. Now as the following warning suggests, we have to simply initiate a base URL for it. So here I will be simply creating a new constructor which will be simply task network, which will be requiring a base URL, which will be a base URL, right? Now, once you have defined the following base URLs super constructor, what you can really do, you can simply create a future method. Let's say fetch task, right? With the help of this future method, we'll be simply fetching some task from our backend, right? Now, as this method is future, let's add the async quotation just like this. Now, under my fetch task method, what I'll simply do, I'll simply say return send get request the following send get request will be automatically imported from our easy api helper now as the following name suggests the send get request will be sending a get request to our server and under the place of route what you can simply do you can simply provide the sub url because our base api url will be the following base url right so right now the following route for me will be task slash fetch Right, the base, the following sub URL will be having a header known as task and the following fetch to be sub URL. Right, and that's it. With the simple line of this, you can simply fetch, that is, you can simply send a get request to your server. Now, once you have defined the following method here, you must be worrying about how will it handle exceptions. Now, that's the magic of Easy API. It will be handling all the exceptions and all the warnings and etc. within itself. What you have to do, you have to simply write the following get request. And if it requires any parameters, we have got a parameters option as well. Under these parameters, you have to simply provide your params and that will be automatically folded over task slash fetch slash that parameters. Right now, we don't require any parameters. So let's erase them, right? So now you can see I am simply sending a get request to fetch all the tasks. So now what I'll do, I'll go under my task repository let me correct the following name. So under my task repository, I'll be simply creating a new class. Now the following task repository will be helping us in modeling our data. So I'll simply say the following task repository will be extending a class known as 
easy model wrapper right so the following easy model wrapper will be giving us certain functions and properties that will be helping us in parsing the data from our models right now as you have guessed i have already created a small model based on the response from the postman the following model will be helping us in modelizing our data now you can simply create the following model with any of the online websites or from the extension of vs code itself it's completely dependent on you right so right now you can see i got my task repository so right now what i can do i can simply create one more future method just right here and the following future method will be asynchronous as well so under my method what i'll do i'll simply say return and to return i'll simply say return nested model decoder the following nested model decoder will be a base property under the easy model wrapper itself now let me explain to you all the parameters the following nested model decoder method will require first of all it will be requiring a parent type class and secondly it will be requiring a child type class along with that will be requiring a response and a json format now let me show you what the following thing means in terms of code so first of all i know that all of my tasks will be through the following model right it will be a task it will be containing two different properties status and data and the following its metadata right so what i want to do i'll simply say my parent type class here is nothing but task right so i'll simply copy the name and here i'll simply say task let's import it so i can simply say let's import our following thing so once i imported it the second property it will be requiring is a child type class right now the child type class is the second class after the following boolean variable because you see after writing too many of code for industry standard projects all of the following projects will be having a common model structure that is it will be having a status and it will be having a data right now if you are not using the following method and practice you should be using it right because whenever you will be applying for bigger uh, internships or bigger projects you will be getting data in such a way it will be containing a status it will be a boolean of true or false and some data so it will be also require it will be giving us some data and the following data will be nothing but simply a task data class so i'll simply copy the name and paste it here that's it it will be a parent and it will be a child now what's the response i can simply say the response will be nothing but from a task network so here i'll simply say let's instantiate our task network so here i'll simply say final task network and task network it will be requiring a constructor so here i'll simply say it will be requiring let's say required this dot task network and let's remove the constant from this side so right now i can simply say the following response will be a wait task network dot fetch task right easy because we know the response it will be under await state for task network dot fetch task and the json format will be nothing but the default json format so here i'll simply say task not to json but from json from json you'll be requiring the following thing to be providing now you must say what if the following things are not the same but let me tell you whenever you will be fetching data from custom backend you will be getting the same format no matter no matter what you do but let's say we don't have two different classes we have a simple a single class for task at that point what you have to do i can remove the following code and at that point what i'll do i'll simply say return model decoder the following model decoder will be simply taking the following json format type class and a response and a success keyword in case our data format is not status but success or any sort of thing right but you know our task model has two different classes known as task and model so here we don't require this thing but simply a nested model decoder so let's remove this out and we'll be having all of our data through this format right now once we have got our nested model decoder what's remaining is simply catching the bugs and catching the exceptions right so what you can really do you can simply add a try catch block because for catching all the exceptions you will be requiring a try catch block right so here i have same simply say try and add a catch so here i'll simply say try returning the following data if there is an error simply catch it so now i can simply say on 
easy exception it is a class defined under our easy api package so here i can simply say if try the following thing try returning the entire data but on easy exception catch the exception so i simply say catch e and once we got our exception let's add exception here and once we got our exception simply do it something here so i'll simply say print exception dot message it will be giving us a message right so right now let's not add the following uh, print statement here but let's say debug print right if we got any exception simply print it if not simply return the following thing all the exceptions that might occur while fetching data will be catched by our easy exception class now once we have got the following task repository and task network done let's fetch all the tasks right so what i'll do i'll simply go under my home view and here i'll simply first of all instantiate my task repository so here i'll simply say final task repository to be task repository is equal to task repository it will be requiring a task network just like this so here let's add a task network and our task record will be requiring a base url so here i can simply say base url that we have defined under our main.dart file right what you can also do you can simply copy the name from this side or add it here it doesn't matter right so now we have our task repo here so what i can do i can go under my container and have a child a child will be nothing but a future builder at this point right so let's add a future builder and here i will be having a future so let's say future to be task repo page tasks after this i will be having a builder boilerplate things so here let's have a context and a snapshot now once we have got these things let's switch the data so here i'll simply say this snapshot or a correct spelling and a snapshot has data we can simply return a list view builder so here i'll simply say return list view builder just like this and now what i can simply do if our snapshot has data i'll simply pass the data under a list where i'll simply say my task data will be a model class of task data which will be data from our snapshot dot data as the list of task data just like this right so here i can simply say the item count will be data dot length and here for now i'll be simply returning here a list style so here i'll simply having a title which will be a text for now and here it will be data dot not dot but an index and after that i'll simply say tax title right but it will also show us some errors if we not add a return statement if nothing happens so here i'll be simply adding a container and it will be having a height of zero and a width of zero right so here it's showing us a warning unnecessary container let's remove our container right so this should be it so here let's add a size box yeah the boilerplate thing what you can simply do now i can simply press f5 and reload our entire application all right so we are back and we have got a small exception of the foreign url so what i can simply do i can go under my home view and here i'll simply add a slash and after that what i'll do i'll simply say my following shrink wrap for the list is true and simply hot restart the entire application let's wait for it also now you can see we are able to fetch the data with the help of easy api right under the following application we are able to fetch the following data which will be some tasks that are available under my database right now we have done nothing right the integration was too easy what we have done let me explain to you everything that we have done so far right so first of all what you have to do you have to simply create a network class and add all the methods that you want for example this is our send get request method so i have used the route of this one and that's it but you have to simply provide a constructor so don't forget about the constructor after this i created a small repository which extended with easy model wrapper under this ed model wrapper i have simply used the nested model decoder to simply decode the data from my task without adding any custom methods right once this is done if there is any exception i am simply printing the following exception so this is how you will be able to perform http request with the help of easy api package now i have taken a simple example here but if you want to simply deep dive under easy api package 
do follow my next series or read the documentation that is available over the official page of the package right so i hope this video has helped you a lot in integrating your api now make sure you add a like over the package that is a pub.dev package and i clearly know there will be a lot of errors and bugs if you properly tested it and if you find any bugs or errors simply add a pull request or add an issue under the github repository of the following package now i hope this video has helped you over how you can simply integrate your application with rest api without any external hard work or hard coding right everything is clear to you i hope that's clear to you but if it's not you can simply drop me a message on my instagram anytime you want i'm available 24 by 7 and with that said use this package do let me know the feedback over this package i am hoping a lot from you that you will be using this package and let me know the feedback so simply try out all the methods that it will be giving to you and it will be giving you other methods as well so here it will be simply giving us other methods like send put request post request delete request etc and etc right so i hope this video has helped you and i'll see you in the next project which is the task planner with that said have a good day goodbye